Hello, it's Shade here. Welcome to our top 10 tips for consumer protection. Tip number 10 would seem a lot like a no-brainer. And this is uh, to do your research before you enter into any contract with a person or a company. Um, there's so much information out there these days that there's almost no excuse not to look a company up before entering into an agreement for services or um, to buy a product from them. So go online, um, you can go on google.com and go on Yelp or you can go on um, Better Business Bureau even and sometimes you can even find reviews on ripoffreport.com. So at least even if nothing comes up while you're doing your search, you know you've done your best um, to do your due diligence before entering into an agreement with uh, an individual or a company. Tip number nine is to make sure that you know exactly what it is that you're you're agreeing to before you actually agree to it. So clarify, clarify, clarify. In terms of buying products, sometimes it's a little easier because you can tell, okay, I'm getting so many units of oranges or apples and so I'll pay this much and I'll get this much. And that seems a lot easier, but even within that context, sometimes a lot gets lost in translation. So especially when it's a service type contract, um, where we're not dealing with widgets or units, um, repeat the, the understanding that you have to the other party um, to check and verify to make sure that you're speaking the same language. Tip number eight, um, under contract law, there has to be an offer and an acceptance. And so we want you to get your acceptance conveyed in writing and also when you're on the other side, get the other person to convey their acceptance in writing. So for instance, if it's something such as a purchase order that was emailed to the other party, you wanna make sure to say, please respond yay or nay. And they can respond and say, I agree with the purchase order. I agree with this part, but not that part. Then we don't really have an acceptance at that level. So make sure to get the acceptance in writing. And if you are the one doing the accepting, also make it clear in writing what you're accepting and what you're not accepting. Tip number seven is to stay away from cash transactions as much as you can, um, mostly because cash transactions are not very traceable. They're not easily traceable and there might be a dispute even when you, you have receipts um, to show. So try to use the best form of payment such as your personal checks, company checks or credit cards, you know, debit cards, things like that, because third party companies that uh, are in charge of those forms of payment will also have backup records in case you lose yours. Um, at, at, if you must, then do cashier's check or money order and keep your stubs because you never know. Tip number six is to nip it in the bud if the other party is not performing um, as they should be in terms of their end of the bargain. So instead of just overlooking it, you know, and complaining maybe to your friends or your family, um, go ahead and write a short email. At least you have it documented in writing that you are objecting to the non-performance. So we want that in case there's a, a need to revisit the matter later and you don't want the other party to say you waived the non-performance. Tip number five is to make sure that you have clean hands before you bring anybody to court regarding non-performance of the agreement. So the legal system requires people to have clean hands in order to complain of breach. So you can't be in breach and then also bring somebody else saying that they're in breach unless they breached first in a material, substantial, you know, significant manner. Tip number four is in reference to when dealing with um, individuals or entities that could potentially be licensed or carry liability insurance. Um, it's good to seek those people out because if there should be an issue in the future and you want to file a claim, it helps significantly if there's an insurance company that you could uh, put on the hook for that as opposed to going after an individual contractor. And also them having a license sometimes tells you that they might possibly care about quality work. Um, so if it's a realtor, make sure to look up their license yourself, um, but ask them directly and say, are you licensed and is your license active? Um, you know, th 
those are good questions to ask. Um, have you ever been suspended for anything? Tip number three is um, when you believe that the other party has breached the contract and you've already tried a few things and they're still uh, continuing the breach, you can actually write them a demand letter, um, certified mail with return received, specifying what your issues are um, with their performance or non-performance. So make sure that you're very specific as to what, why you think they've breached the contract and that you want a response or some kind of change or performance uh, by a date certain. So put a deadline in there, and a reasonable deadline, you know, depends on the situation, but seven days, 10 days, or 30 days would be more than reasonable. Tip number two is in reference to the actual contract itself. Um, a lot of contracts will actually be okay if they're verbal, they'll be recognized under the law as legal contracts, um, with a few exceptions like things um, like real estate transactions or um, agreements that may not be able to be performed within a year. Um, those have to be in writing, but we suggest that you put every agreement in writing, period. And this is because it's so much easier to track um, the agreement or the terms of the agreement if there's a writing that we can look at and reference. And it's also easier to track whether somebody is in breach if there's a writing that we can reference. Um, also, every contract should have at least uh, some minimum terms. And when you put something in writing, it forces you to make sure that those terms are covered, uh, such as who, what, where, how much, by when. And if time is of the essence, make sure you put that in there as well. Tip number one is in reference to the breach itself. In order to drag somebody to court or um, bring a case against them, the breach has to be material, meaning that it has to go to the core of your agreement with that party. So for instance, if you're delivering um, food to a party that was supposed to take place on Saturday, and you did deliver the food on Saturday and you delivered 199 plates instead of 200 plates as a group, that would not be a material breach. If you delivered the same 199 plates but you happened to deliver it on Monday, two days after the event already took place instead of Saturday, then that would definitely be a material breach.